and everywhere you look, left and right, they are just stating those filthy physicists and left as an exercise to the reader, easy to see, test calculated by hand, it's so easy, no it's not. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Welcome back to Navide. We are going to do something completely out of context today. Really doesn't have anything to do with anything on this channel, but I'm still going to solve this nonlinear system of equations with you today, which looks absolutely horrible. So there are some betas and zetas in here, some Qs, and we want to solve for beta and zeta basically. And this thing right here um, was given to me by a former um, a fellow student of mine. So Herr Earl, if you are watching, hello, this is for you. Because he couldn't solve it and he gave it to me. I was helping him already in the bachelor thesis solving one or two things. And well, this thing right here is just the absolute violation of human rights because it, it has something to do with um, research, okay, with, with the POTS model and everywhere you look, left and right, they are just stating those filthy physicists are <laughs> left as an exercise to the reader easy to see, test calculated by hand, it's so easy, no it's not, it's not. It took me 17 pages to come up with a kind of decent and rigorous looking way to solve this thing, so shut the frick up, stupid physicists, you are annoying as <laughs> Seriously, so we are going to solve it my way today. Just some background information. This has to do with the POTS model. It, it just strives for expressing the free energy of a spin system using the energy density and the entropy density. And this system of equation kind of arises from um, some series expansion, if I remember correctly, blah, 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 links to the paper and so will be down there in the description, I think. And now we are going to dive right in. So it's a nonlinear system of equations and well, there's not much you could possibly do right now. So, so my first thought was, if I take a look at the first equation, there's at least one nice thing. Namely, we can make use of the logarithm rules. We have logarithm with a coefficient of one and we could use logarithm rules to kind of simplify this. And then, if we were able to use logarithm rules, we could maybe plug it in, into the second equation. But the thing is, second equation, we have weird as frick coefficients here right now. So, they don't really fit. We can plug this into here because, well, we, we don't have a negative sign here in the first place and also those coefficients aren't equal. So what my first initial thought was, and this is what I call a programmer move, is, well, why not assume that we can set those two equal? I mean, if those two were equal, then things would be nicer. We could make use of logarithm rules, for example. And this is what we are going to assume now. We are going to assume that those two are actually equal. So, 1 plus q minus 1 times zeta, um, also called sperm, <laughs> over q minus 1 must be equal to 1 minus zeta. And now we can start solving. Um, okay, so we are going to use the additive property of the numerator. This is thus equivalent to 1 over q minus 1. Um, plus and q minus 1 and q minus 1 are going to cancel out to just zeta being equal to 1 minus zeta. Okay, now we are going to add zeta on both sides, giving us 2 zeta and subtracting 1 over q minus 1 on both sides, giving us overall um, 2 zeta being equal to 1 minus 1 over q minus 1. If we were to expand this 1 by q minus 1 over q minus 1, okay, let me do this real quick, over q minus 1, we are going to get overall, okay, q minus 1 minus 1 is q minus 2, over q minus 1 and then dividing both sides by 2 because it's not equal to 0 is going to give us a value for zeta overall being equal to 1 half times q minus 2 over q minus 1 and at this point I thought well this actually looks nice and if I take a look at all the papers out there that state that it's easy to calculate this actually comes extremely close to our solution but it's not the real solution for Zeta, but it's going to help us actually. So this is why I call this thing a programmer move. This is going to help us immensely solve this system of equation, even though this was kind of a false assumption. It's going to help us so much solving this thing right here, okay? I tried to make it as rigorous as, as possible, to, to make it as um, logically sounding as possible to solve the system of equation, but it took me 17 pages to come up with something kind of decent. And this is my way. And I hope you are going to like it. Okay, it's, it's a programmer move and we are going to plug 
this thing now into the first equation and see what we are going to get overall. So at first I want you guys to notice something. This q minus 1 times theta up here can easily be, be found out by using this expression right here. That means that q minus 1 times theta by assuming that q minus 1 is not equal to 0, which it is not because q is greater or equal to 3. Okay, q minus 2 and q minus 1 is never equal to 0. Then if we were to multiply it on both sides, this gives us for this expression q minus 2 over 2. And also what we have here is 1 minus theta. Let us compute this real quick too. So 1 minus theta is thus 1 minus, okay, q minus 2 over q minus 1 and we have the factor of 1 half, okay? So we need to expand this 1 by 2 times q, uh, two, 2 times q minus 1, exactly over 2 times q minus 1, giving us um, 2 times q minus 2, okay? Track your 2 into everything and then minus q plus 2, negative and negative becomes positive, over 2 times q minus 1, okay? Um, this q and this q is going to cancel out, this and this, leaving us with q over 2 times q minus 1 overall. Okay, and this makes matters way easier because we can now plug it into here and see what we are going to actually get. So this means that for the first equation, 2 beta theta, we are going to leave it how it is for now, it's going to be equal to the logarithm of, okay, 1 plus q minus 1 times theta is going to give us um, 1 plus q minus 2 over 2. And you might notice that um, if we break this numerator up, this is q over 2, minus 2 over 2 is negative 1, so plus 1, and this 2 is going to cancel out to just q over 2. And then negative the logarithm of, and this was exactly q over 2 times q minus 1. And now we are going to make use of the logarithm rules I have talked about before. So we are going to um, use the logarithm rules to divide this factor by this factor in the argument, giving us the logarithm. Oh, by the way, logarithm means natural log, as always. So logarithm of q over 2 divided by q over 2 times q minus 1. q over 2 is a common factor, it's going to cancel out. And then we are going to have 1 over 1 over q minus 1, gives us overall the logarithm of q minus 1 leaving us with 2 times beta theta being equal to the logarithm of q minus 1. Okay, and now we are going to divide both sides by 2 and theta. Both are not equal to 0 by the argumentations I have um, given you before. Thus, beta is equal to 1 half times 1 over theta times the logarithm of q minus 1. And thus, overall, if we plug in the definition for theta, theta was this right here, the one half and the one half are going to cancel out. So this is like one half over one half, basically, giving us um, q minus one over q minus two times the logarithm of q minus one. And do you know what the most surprising thing is? <laughs> Even though theta isn't the right value that you are going to find in papers, this beta right here is actually right. This is the right solution for beta. And this is going to help us. <laughs> mistake and mistake are going to cancel out for whatever freaking reason. This beta right here is going to help us solve this equation actually, okay? If you were to plug in this definition for theta and beta into this equation, you are going to get a wrong expression. You are going to get a false argumentation here. The equivalence relation is not going to hold. But if we were to solve this a tiny little bit and plug in beta as its definition right here, you are actually going to get the right value out for theta. And this is what we are going to do on the next chalkboard. All right, I've written out the beta definition, which is the right one actually. Okay, um, and now we are going to solve this equation right here kind of elementary, okay? Really elementary. This is where I agree with the physicists that you can kind of solve the second equation elementary, but without a definition of beta, you're going to be fricked in the ass, okay? So we are going to dive right in and we are going to break stuff up. We are going to use the distributive laws on some stuff. So at first we are going to break this part up yet again in one over q minus one plus theta and then we are going to distribute the logarithm into everything. Same with the logarithm multiplied with this one minus theta, leaving us overall with a really huge ex expression. We are going to get one over q minus one um, times the logarithm of one plus q minus one 
times theta and then plus theta times the logarithm of 1 plus q minus 1 times theta times sperm and then we are going to get okay I'm going to use the theta at first negative theta times the logarithm of 1 minus theta and then plus the logarithm of 1 minus theta this covers this part the negative beta times theta squared being equal to zero. Okay, we have broken everything up, but here comes the nice part in. Here's actually a common factor of theta, and this is what I was striving for at the beginning, okay? But making those um, coefficients equal just wasn't really the way to go because we are going to get a force factor of one half, basically. Let us factor out the theta, but, but this is actually a nice thing that we are doing here because, you know, logarithm of this minus logarithm of this is by the first equation just two times beta theta. So this right here, is two times beta theta, leaving us overall with two times beta theta squared, okay, I'm multiplying it by the theta. Meaning two times beta theta squared is going to cancel out with the beta theta squared into just positive beta theta squared. Okay, let us continue. This means that we are going to have beta theta squared. This is this and this cancelling out in a way. Plus one over q minus one, logarithm of one plus q minus one, theta and then plus the logarithm of 1 minus theta being equal to 0. This looks way nice, all right? And now we can start to solve a bit more. Let us multiply both sides by q minus 1 because it's never equal to 0, leaving us overall. I'm going to write everything out. q minus 1 beta theta squared plus the logarithm of 1 plus q minus 1 times theta plus, okay, now we are going to have q minus 1 times the logarithm of 1 minus theta being equal to 0. Now let us um, distribute everything into everything yet again. So, meaning this right here is nothing but, okay, we are going to have negative the logarithm of 1 minus theta plus q times the logarithm of 1 minus theta. Why have I done this yet again? Well, because you see, we have the logarithm of this minus the logarithm of this is by the first equation yet again two times beta theta. Let us make use of this property yet again, leaving us overall with zero being equal to, okay, now we are going to have q minus one times beta theta squared. And then we are going to have, um, now we are going to plug the first equation into here, giving us overall two times beta theta. And now, last but not least, plus q times the logarithm of 1 minus theta. Okay, good thing is we're going to have a common factor of beta theta. We are going to factor it out, leaving us overall with 0 being equal to, whew, that's a lot of computation, I gotta admit that, um, beta sperm times, okay, there's going to be the 2 left, plus, and now theta times q minus 1, plus, q times the logarithm of 1 minus theta. Okay, and now we actually came pretty far on this one. This is actually pretty fabulous because now all that we need to do is plug in our right definition for beta into here. Let us plug beta into here, leaving us overall with 0 being equal to, okay, this is going to give us q minus 1 over q minus 2 times theta 2 plus theta q minus 1 times the logarithm, okay, this is the logarithm part of beta, of q minus one, and then plus q times the logarithm of one minus theta. And now, here's where everything is going to conclude. And without beta, like I said before, you don't have any chance to solve this thing. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to compare coefficients this time. At first, let me bring this part to the other side, but to get rid of the negative sign that we are going to get in the process, I'm just going to use the logarithm rule that we can basically invert what we have in here in the argument and just bring a negative sign to the front. Meaning overall, this equation turns into this being equal to q times the logarithm of what we have here, and now we are going to compare coefficients. You are going to notice that we are going to have the logarithm of q minus 1 and the logarithm of 1 over 1 minus theta. Meaning for this equation to hold, we need the logarithm arguments to be equal. Meaning overall, q minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus theta. Now, here's where the good part comes in. We are going to invert both sides because q minus 1 is never equal to 0. Thus, 1 minus theta is equal to 1 over q minus 1. 
Now we are going to add zeta on both sides, subtract q, uh, 1 over q minus 1 on both sides, leaving us with 1 minus 1 over q minus 1 being equal to zeta. And actually, we had this situation before. 1 minus 1 over q minus 1 is nothing but q minus 2 over q minus 1 being equal to zeta. And this actually holds. <laughs> we are done. This right here is the actual value for zeta. And you know what the difference is? The one half is missing. And this is where the error initially lied, because this one half factor is going to ruin everything for you. And now you can also compare, for, it really doesn't matter what you do, you can compare the arguments of the logarithm or you can compare the coefficients here. You're going to get the same thing. If you know where to plug your zeta definition into the coefficients, so you are going to set the coefficients of the logarithms equal to one another, plug in your zeta definition, and then it's going to be a true um, argument here, a true statement. And yeah, this basically concludes the video. This was my attempt on solving this non-linear system of equations. It's absolutely horrible. I hate when they do this, when they just say it's so easy, because it's not easy. When they say it's easy and really easy to see, then it isn't in the normal case. It's probably unsolvable for most people. And uh, there was one mathematician, for example, Papa Potts. He sat there in his basement for like three weeks straight and tried solving this thing. And he came up with something by sharp looking, okay? And this is what they are using today and I came up with it by um, doing um, arrows cancelling out one another. Never mind, thank guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel, if like, don't forget to go over to Flamble Maps 2 and subscribe there too. And up until next video, thank you guys, Flamble Day. Ciao!